Hi, it's Malachi, the rabbinic intern at Congregation Kolomi, and we're going to make a cheese and spinach latke that I suppose could be for Hanukkah, as a lot of people like latkes, but we're a vegetarian household, so we make latkes all the time, and Shabbat is as good a time as any to share the recipe that we enjoy so much. I got this one from Fulvert's Magazine, to give credit where credit's due, it was from their Yiddish section. They have the recipe in Yiddish on YouTube, if you'd like to hear it that way. So as I was saying, we're going to do a cheese and spinach latke recipe that came from the Fovert's magazine in the Yiddish section. They described it as being from Turkey and the Turkish community, and it consists, unlike what we think of as our routine latke, a nice big plate of spinach. Our recipe calls for two pounds frozen thawed drained spinach, one large onion, four eggs, three quarters cup sesame, seasoned breadcrumbs, quarter cup of parsley, salt and pepper, cup of cheddar cheese. What you guys are seeing is a half recipe. I'm not gonna make a whole recipe for just the two of us tonight. So again, what's in front of us is about a pound of spinach chopped, thawed and drained. And this is just a block of frozen spinach from the grocery store. About a half an onion, two eggs, breadcrumbs, and here I usually just smash up some matzah to make breadcrumbs, salt and pepper to taste. I'm not your doctor, you figure out the salt. Alright, so when I'm doing latkes, whether they're potato or spinach, uh, there's always going to be some stuff that's wet, like the onions, or in this case the spinach, and I usually put a little bit of that salt on them and let it sit for a minute or so after they've been grated. But then, taking them to the sink and giving them a good squeeze, get the moisture out of this stuff because you're going to be putting it into hot oil. This is just one of those things for me anyway, I've always done making these and it seems to give me a better end result and something a little bit crispier rather than having to work on cooking that water back out of the final product. All right, you can see I've, I've crushed down the grated onion to get some of the moisture out of it. And I've done the same with that spinach. I mean, however you want to drain it, that's, uh, that's on you. Um, a colander, I'm sure, would work fine. But as these are the sort of things I make quick, I usually just end up wringing them out over the sink to deal with the excess moisture. So we're just going to start combining these things in our mixing bowl. Our one frozen flat of spinach. Again, this is a half recipe, a half and a large onion grated, a couple of eggs, and the breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs are seasoned, they've got some salt and pepper in them already, but that's it for seasoning. And as I have found with almost all latkes I've ever made, um, there's a certain amount of feel to this process, and getting that consistency right is going to be uh, variable, so per recipe to a degree. Now, when it comes to the cheese, if uh, keeping kosher and you're having meat dishes and you're worried about being flyshick versus dairy, you don't have to put the cheese in, but we're a vegetarian house and, and I like cheddar cheese, so that's going in there. And then you just mix it up. I'm usually going for a certain sense of it binding and getting a little dry, but not crumbly. I would say Play-Doh, but it's been so long I don't really remember what Play-Doh feels like.
when it comes time to actually putting this in the hot oil, we're gonna re-wet our hands. A little cold water goes a long way to keeping it from sticking too badly. But just as a test here, that feels like it's making a pretty good ball. And that's, that's kind of the consistency of what I'm going for because we're gonna, we're gonna look to make little balls to fry. Okay. All right, we're over at the pan and the oil's on like a medium, medium gas. Usually I grab a couple pieces of onion or something off the edge of the bowl and drop that in there because I want to see if it starts bubbling to let me know that oil's hot. Again, a little cold water on the fingers. Dry your hands off. You don't want drippy water going into that hot oil. Anybody uh, out there who's had that fun knows exactly what I mean. It tends to get a little snappy spit at you when there's water involved. Making little I don't know about meatball sized balls. I always give them a little twist as they go in the pan so they don't stick so bad on that first landing. And you're going to just have be barred by uh, the number you can do by the size of your pan per batch. Every household's got a favorite spatula. Ours is no different. I usually give them a little tap to make them into a bit of more of a patty. And let them sizzle until they get brown on one side. All right, so they've been sitting in the oil in, I don't know if it's been maybe a whole minute, maybe a little bit more. It depends on the heat of your oil, how fast you're cooking these things. And it's hard to not peak, but you got to not peak and let the bottoms start to cook up. Just kind of eyeballing around the edges to see where it's starting to change color. But after that begins to happen, we'll give them a little turn, and this is the kind of browning we're looking for on our, on our latkes. Give them a little turn and repeat the process for the other side. They're browning up on both sides now, so it's just a matter of getting them on a plate with some paper towels to drain. And that's the Turkish or Spinatin latke, or a spinach latkes from a Turkish recipe. I found some years ago on the Fulbert's website and thought I'd be happy to share with the rest of my friends at Kola Me. Make it. <laughs> <laughs> Make it whenever. I'm not your doctor. <laughs> fried food is fried food. Enjoy your fried food responsibly.